Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Tatalomov in the five minute pool on ICC. All right, so the theme of today is aggression. I'm gonna try to play my games as aggressively as possible within reason, and we're gonna see how this works out. That's why I'm playing E4 once again as white. I wanna expand my repertoire a little bit, challenge myself. If you're not innovating in five minute, you're probably not making the most of your chances at this time control, as far as learning purposes go. So let's see, this is the four pawns attack against the Alakine's defense. Of Jochen's defense. And I'm supporting the pawn via this bishop e3 move because if you play knight f3 too early, black can pin you with bishop g4. So that's what I'm attempting to avoid. I believe knight f3 is correct now, so I will do that. And I'm just going to continue with bishop e2 and castles. I have a space advantage that I've already established, but I do need to get castled, so I'll play that way. It's Friday, so I hope you guys are about to start an enjoyable weekend. I don't have too many plans this weekend. I might actually stream one of the days, maybe Sunday. If so, I'll put out an announcement video and schedule the stream, the stream here on YouTube. But other than that, I'm just looking forward to relaxing. I saw The Revenant last night with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy. I won't give any spoilers away. Pretty good movie, although probably not worth the hype that it's had. I did like the CGI bear scene, though. That was good. Tatalamov is challenging the center with f6. I kind of want to play knight h4 because f6 creates a certain weakness on this diagonal. But if knight h4 take e5, I take f5. I'm probably not getting much there, although I could play d5 at the end of that line. Probably safer just to take. But let me see this once again. Knight h4, f takes e5, knight takes f5, e takes f5, d5. Knight d4, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, bishop f6. I suspect black is okay there. Yeah, let's just take then. And he'll probably take with the bishop. He has a weak pawn on e6 that maybe I can try to exploit in the long run, but he does have active minor pieces. On the whole, I think this should be better for white, but I'll have to proceed with some caution. So the attack on d4 is annoying. Like, I can't play queen e1 because I lose d4. I could play queen d2. I suspect he's going to go queen e7 maybe. But that might be all right because then I can play rook d1. Another option is c5 here. I'm trying to chase the knight, but he'll come into d5 should I do that. I think I should just be practical and play this move. I have no lead on the clock anymore. I thought I had a lead on the clock for a second, but I don't. Yeah, he's going to go queen e7 and then bring a rook to d8. So my plan is just to do this. And on rook d8, play queen c1. I don't want my queen lined up with that rook on d8. I know I haven't done much in the aggression department so far, but sometimes you got to stabilize your position. In this opening, white establishes a space advantage oftentimes, and it is up to white to defend that space advantage. With great space comes great responsibility, remember. So d5. What if d5? You can always insert this capture on c3. Or maybe d5, pawn takes. Knight takes. Knight takes, pawn takes. I have bishop c5 at the end. Uh, maybe not. My bishop on e2 is hanging. I could double up. But I'm not feeling that. Maybe c5? Let's go c5. And if knight d5, I think I'm going to drop the bishop back to f2. He has a pretty straightforward plan in mind as far as doubling the rook, so I'm trying to disrupt that a little bit. I'm going to play bishop c4 next and maybe put a rook on e1, try to bear down that e-file, attack the e6 pawn. Okay, I think a3 is sensible here, but he might have knight a5. Let's go rook e1 first. a6 doesn't do a whole lot. Maybe he was worried about bishop b5. But now I'm ready to play bishop c4. So he's getting out of the way. Bishop c4 has got to be a correct move. Or at least a very reasonable move. I know he can go knight a5, but then I'm going to drop the bishop all the way back to f1 and try to prove that the knight is misplaced over here. Yeah, his weaknesses are going to come to tell. 
I predict. Okay, can I crash through on e6? Not yet. Not happening yet. Rook d3, also not working. Let's play a3. Got to move a little quicker. He can take, but I don't know that he wants to give up his light score bishop like that. Probably not, so I don't think he'll do it. He does, just as I say that. Well, now he's got to watch e6 and d5. There's some weak light squares as a result of this trade. He can give a check, but I'll just hide my king. Whoa, did not see that move coming whatsoever. I mean, does it work? All right, I gotta take. He's gonna take on f3, but I seriously doubt that this is working for him. Maybe, though. Queen takes f3, and he's threatening queen g4. I have bishop e2, though. Bishop e2 could be a timely defense. Knight f4 instead. What's this? Okay, so hitting my knight, or hitting my bishop, rather. Hmm. It's a clever move. Queen e3? Queen e3 looks like a timely defense. But he can take a bunch of stuff on d4. Hmm. It's a nice shot. I can take f4, take e6, and then take the rook, but I can even interpose on f7 then. Huh. This appears to be working for him. One more second I'm going to spend, and then i got to make a move and try for the best here. Yeah, I don't see it. i got to play bishop f1. He was threatening queen g6, queen g2 as well. Now he can just take d4, but we'll see what happens. Uh, rook e4 or queen e3. Queen e3, knight c2, though. This is ugly. <laughs> Somebody help. Rook e3, I'm just trying to guard the f3 pawn. He said something in chat, too. Something in Spanish, I think. Okay, queen h5, hitting the pawn. Time pressure for me. It's hard to find a move, though, quite honestly. Yeah, he's going to win the um, f3 pawn, but I think i got to pitch it. Knight takes f3, I'll play rook f2. I can't take on d7, I get mated on h2. He's saying something again in the chat. This is really strange. Knight d5. Okay. Um, I probably should take it. Hmm. He has queen d1 coming, but all right. He's going to trade the queens. Check. I'll play rook f1. Check. I have very little time left at this stage. He has, after trading the rooks, he has knight takes h2. I'm going to go bishop c4 then and hope for the best. I feel like I've been hoping for the best in uh, many cases in this game already. Maybe that move wasn't so accurate by him. Check. At least I get a pawn back. Go after b7. Can I do anything with my 14 seconds left? Ooh, a6 might have been hanging there. I could have taken that. Okay, so at least his rook is a little bottled up now. I'm going to try to reroute and attack that pawn on a6. Let's go after that guy. Check. Ooh, we dropped the knight. Check. Ooh, and I win this now. OK, 
Okay, let's do this. Amazingly, Check. we're going to win this game. Checkmate. Strange game. Yeah, he appeared to be confidently outplaying us with uh, that tactical sequence, starting with, what move was it? Bishop takes f3, and then knight takes d4, which I didn't see coming. And was, by all measures, just cruising to victory. And then he gave it back in a time scramble with some egregious blunder, knight e4. But his play, even up till that point, was looking a little suspicious. Like, yeah, b6, weakening his structure. But knight e4 is the real culprit. Okay, let's go back and take a look at that. So my plan of playing aggressively and trying to put maximum pressure on the opponent kind of backfired a little bit. I do think the four pawns attack is a good choice for white. Although at the most recent tournament I played, I was discussing this variation with international master Andre Gorovitz, who's a friend of mine. Uh, we were actually rooming together at the tournament. And I don't know why we were talking about this opening because neither of us really plays it. But he was saying that he thinks the four pawns attack is a forced draw, as he said. Um, so I'm not aware of why that would be the case, but it very well might be. There's a lot of openings in modern chess that are considered close to four draws. So with f4, I'm gaining a ton of space at the expense of development. And as I said earlier, with great space comes great responsibility. And white has to be ready to support this center. And sometimes he doesn't manage to do it. So with bishop e3, I'm guarding d4 in a way that ensures that I don't get pinned. If I play knight f3, bishop g4 could be a good response. So instead, bishop e3, black plays bishop f5, knight develop, knight c3, and only then do I play knight f3 when black's bishop has already been committed to the f5 square. Bishop e7, I'm going to add the engine in right about here. So I played bishop e2. If the position stabilizes, white should be better, because these pawns do count for something. But in the Alakine's defense, black can often look forward to good minor piece play. And if they can undermine the pawns correctly, they can uh, gain quite a bit of counterplay very quickly. So he played f6. I was debating this line with knight h4. And then f takes e5, knight takes f5, pawn takes f5, and then d5. But I think knight d4 is going to solve any issues that black may have. If he had to play something other than knight d4... Like, let's say knight b8, maybe I'm getting something after c5, and these pawns are rumbling. But knight d4 in that variation, so right here, looks like a good cure-all for black's ailments, because I can win the pawn back, but then I'm weak on the dark squares, and black doesn't have any issues castling. So yeah, and the engine gives an edge for black. So I traded and then castled. Maybe white needs something more testing at this stage because my plan of queen d2 and rook d1 led straight into problems down the d-file and I had to end up hiding my queen on c1 anyways. The computer advocates queen d2 though. So queen e7, rook a d1, rook a d8. Hmm, it's possible white just doesn't have much here. Yep, queen c1 because... You should get used to avoiding situations where your queen is lined up with one of your opponent's rooks. That just leads to tactical problems if you're unaware of what's going on in that regard. So black might be setting up for knight takes d4 followed by an e5 move when the minor piece that I might have on d4 is unable to move because I would lose my queen behind it. So I need a prophylactic move like queen c1 to get out of the way. I could choose queen e1 as well, but I was a little wary of moves like this. Attacking c4 twice and hitting b2 as well. Maybe b3 takes care of business, but queen c1 seemed more coherent. Monitors my queenside structure. Yeah, and he played an engine recommended move, rook d7. Simply preparing rook d8. I think it's just the case that white doesn't have much here. If you play this line and want to chime in in the comments, feel free to do so. I played reasonable moves as far as I can tell, but... White just might not be that much better. Rook f2 is the computer's suggestion. That's a weird looking move. So black just doubles up. Now play d5. 
I guess the point of rook f2 is to defend the pawn, or defend the bishop on e2. So if now he takes, c takes. Oh, okay. That's a detail I think I missed entirely. That if takes, then white has bishop c4 at the end of the line. And black is caught in a pin. Still not sure why rook f2 fits into that plan. Rook d2 is a move I considered, simply trying to double up myself. Probably those are better than what I did, c5, because this does give away the d5 square. I thought in the long run I'd be able to do something involving, like, rook e1, bishop c4, with pressure here and here, but that never panned out. Bishop f2, black played a6. Okay. I gotta say, black is playing some engine moves. Like, these last few moves that they've played have all been the engine recommended moves. Rook d7, knight d5, that one is fine. It's not hard to find for a human. a6, though, I mean, to me, that move seems a little strange. I don't get the sense that bishop b5 is in white's plan, so... To me, as a human player, I don't quite see why a6 is necessary. Queen f7. Yeah, I mean, that, that turns out to be a good move, getting the queen off the the e-file and preparing for it to come out to g6. Bishop c4. Bishop g4. Yeah, and this, this idea, bishop g4 followed by taking on f3, turned out to be good. So, because of that, I should address it by playing bishop e2. Guarding the knight. That's already an admission that my concept involving bishop c4 is not working out. But sometimes you need to admit that you're wrong. I just didn't believe that my position would be all that bad after the trade on f3. But in view of this amazing tactical shot capturing on d4, it looks like white's busted or should be. Yep, again, these are all the engine moves. I think this player was using an engine. And we'll see as the game goes along. And I know that they ended up losing this game. But uh, this sequence, like all these moves were best, starting with basically rook d7. And this is a very hard tactical operation to find in a blitz game. Like, very hard. I would say 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 on the difficulty scale. Because not only did they sacrifice on d4, but then they don't even take the piece back. They don't play the natural looking knight takes d4 followed by queen takes f3. Or queen takes f3 right away. Knight f4... I don't think many grandmasters even find that in a blitz game. And it's best. Yeah, I think I was most concerned about this move, which would threaten this, but bishop e2 seems to be a timely resource guarding the g4 square. What if they insert the capture, though, on d4? So, like, knight takes d4, rook takes d4, and then queen takes f3. Because then if bishop e2, that runs into queen f2 with a fork... There's no bishop on d4 controlling that square. Okay, but here I have rook f1. And my rook does a good job of monitoring g4. So I'm safe. Yeah, knight f4 is an inhuman move for a blitz game. And I probably didn't defend the best, but this this is already tough. As you can see, my position's losing. So I, I think the decisive mistake was a3. If I play bishop e2, I minimize the damage. Being able to recapture with the bishop here blacks out of the woods, but I think this a3 move is giving the game away. So we're going to continue looking at this because I'm very curious. Check. Yeah, again, engine move, followed by engine move, queen h5. Okay, so right around here, I think he stops playing optimally because i felt like i should be losing very quickly yeah knight b3 takes me down right away and mind you he's playing this quickly and he's chatting at the same time <laughs> he asked me and do i speak spanish that's what he said to me in the chat rook f2 yeah knight b3 is decisive with the fork here and here assisted by the rook So rook f2, knight d5, again, not necessarily the best move. Check. Yep, queen d1. Check. 
And I escaped this with only minimal damage. Two pawns, I guess. I thought he was going to play knight takes h2 here with the discovered attack, but I get some counterplay if he does that. His knight is kind of stranded, and if knight g4 here, I take with check, forking the, the king and the knight. Yeah, and he just starts playing suboptimally here, and somehow I climb back in the game and eventually win it thanks to his blunder. So, as usual, this puts me in the awkward position of uh, trying to make a judgment call as to whether someone's cheating. And I only say this if I'm, like, absolutely certain someone's cheating. And I, ha I think, not to toot my own horn, but I think I have a very good track record on this. You can go back and look at games, and plenty of the players that I've accused of cheating on this channel, like, turn out to be actual cheaters. <laughs> in fact, I can't recall any case where that was not the case. And if it is, I apologize to whoever that was. But, um, yeah, th this was just so blatant, the difference in strength. They were using an engine after the opening. Like, there's almost no doubt in my mind. It's theoretically possible a human could come up with that sequence, but that's so difficult that I wouldn't put it um, past all but the best players in the world to figure something like that out in the Blitz game. Yeah, there's just too many engine matches, starting with rook d7, all these moves, queen f7, bishop g4, take f3, knight takes d4, or bishop takes d4, rather, and knight f4. And then I think the human operator took over, and they, they just lost the game. As you saw, they dropped the knight, and it was game over. Okay, so I'm going to report this player. And anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed one, this one. And let me know in the comments if you have any feedback. Talk to you guys later. Bye.